What's going on, everybody? I'm Jabby Kawai, joined by, joined <laughs> by, joined by Gina Lucarelli. <laughs> that was classic. Joined by Joyna Lucarelli. <laughs> All right, so we're looking at Indian jokes only. Nimesh Patel, stand-up comedy. Thanks so much for joining, y'all. Hit the subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications. Vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching while you're subscribing and upvoting. Follow Joyna Lucarelli. On the, her name is Gina Lucarelli. On the social media, links in the description below, right next to Nimesh Patel's name as well. You can find his content, more from him, including full specials for free that you can watch on YouTube. One is called Thank You China. So, without further ado, here we go. Every Columbus Day, I try to steal some land from some Native Americans. I'll give it back, but I want to read a headline that says, Indian steals land from Indians? How the f did this happen? <laughs> Stay woke, man. America's crazy. <laughs> all racism is evil. It's not all evil. Some of it is bad, as in it doesn't hurt my feelings. I was out one night and some guy was like, man, go eat some curry. I was like, why wouldn't I do that? Man? <laughs> some of it is bad in that it hurts people and kills people, but that kind never afflicts white people. The kind that afflicts white people is hilarious. White racism happens to white people all the time. They just don't know it. And it's very funny. White people, since most of you are here, let me ask this question. Have any of you ever gotten a bad coffee at Dunkin' Donuts? Because I haven't. Wait, what? You don't get that joke, which I don't think some of you do. Here in the Northeast, we have oh, okay. this thing called Dunkin' Donuts, which okay. is like Starbucks, but for people that don't have time for pleasantries in the morning. No names given, no names taken. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts motto. In the Northeast, Dunkin' Donuts is run and operated by majority Indian people. And every Dunkin' Donuts, when a white person walks in, there's a little switch underneath the counter. What? No, there's not. There's a, hey, there's a Steve here. And he's gonna order a French vanilla, but give him a decaf hazelnut. <laughs> Gotta get them reparations one way or another. <laughs> it's a weird time to be Indian person, you know, because... I'm like, tell all my friends. Uh, this, these subtitles are like whack. I know. I was like, I was kind of glancing down at them. And I'm like, a zombie? I got to shut these off. I'm sorry to anyone who was depending on those. Like, those are just really bad subtitles. I was looking at them earlier and I was like, I feel like that's not what. No. It, it's not. it doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's a weird time to be Indian person, you know, because I'm like, tell all my friends that are like engineers and shit. Like, yo, just keep a little profile. Because sooner or later. These people that think Mexicans stole their jobs are gonna find out the Indians stole the job. <laughs> I got a bunch of cousins on H1B visas right now. Like, yeah, just keep blaming the Mexicans. We'll be right here. It's hot in these streets. Hey, yeah. Okay, so if, just to give you some context on that, uh, if, if you don't know, a lot of like high level position people in tech companies are often Indian. Like even the CEO of Google, I think his name is Sundar. He's Indian. Okay. Yeah, it happens a lot, <laughs> like a lot. And so there's like this running thing that I guess is both for you. I'm sure you know about this. There's this running thing of, uh, it's not a joke. It's a thing that people are afraid of, of like, you know, Mexicans crossing the border because they're going to take our jobs. It's like they're doing the low level jobs often of like gardening or something, stuff that you wouldn't often find a white person doing in Los Angeles, they're like mowing the lawn and the leaf blowing, all that stuff. They're taking a job that no one else wanted. And so right. that's not really a threat. That's the joke he's making is like the high level jobs Indians are taking those jobs <laughs> you know oftentimes weird time in this country you know feels like at any moment black and white people are about to go to war and Indians are gonna have to choose <laughs> I don't know what side to be on quite frankly it feels like mom and dad are getting divorced you know and dad's really cool but mom's got all the stuff so <laughs> oh god <laughs> Oh, God. Maybe you'll see Dad on the weekend. I don't... Uh. Growing up, you know, as a brown person, you have, like, black thoughts, white thoughts, black experiences, white experiences. Black thought of mine, I think Nicki Minaj is beautiful. Yes. Right? Yes! White thought of mine, I know I cannot handle that woman. 
I sort of gave up on White Plate a long time ago. You know, when that song TikTok came out by Kesha, that was a, that marked the end of my caring about white problems. <laughs> That's a song by a 19 year old white woman who starts her first song ever with wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. <laughs> Tell me, what is it like to be a 19 year old white woman and wake up feeling like a 40 year old black man? <laughs> worth half a billion dollars. I had a white friend tell me their name got misspelled at Starbucks. I was like, oh, word, Philip, your name got misspelled? My name is Nimesh. I once got Kumar. Has it happened to you? I swear to God. <laughs> what? I don't mess with Starbucks no more. I walked into a Starbucks. I told a grown woman, hey, my name is Nimesh. She gave me a cup that said Kumar on it. And then she was like, chai latte, right? I was like, how the hell did you know? <laughs> <laughs> I've embodied black stereotypes. I've embodied white stereotypes. Black stereotype, I love fried chicken. I eat it every day. White stereotype, I'm addicted to heroin. <laughs> <laughs> they say that they, caught they, me off guard. I was... <laughs> I was like looking for like a food thing and yeah. like I'm like what's it gonna be like spaghetti and then you went to like this dark place that was so unexpected say said it Indians so casually like a lot yeah of minority like we've made a lot of progress because Indians do pretty well for themselves I don't like that term progress because I only saw like Indian people in this country in 1965 which means we didn't make progress we just missed the majority of racism do you understand <laughs> Indians were just waiting until shit with black people calmed down. They're like, eh, we'll come over now. That's it. <laughs> From 1911 to 1920, 3,000 Indian people like me in this country, but they called us Caucasians because they already had Indians. The Columbus kind. And, Columbus kind. And then from 1920 to 1965, they deported those 3,000 Indian people. Like, go back to Caucasia, we don't know what to do with you. And that just gave Indian people like 45 years to study and prepare for white people. And apparently what you guys really like is doctors and convenience stores. So now we want That's all. Products. I'm Hindu, so you're all welcome for yoga. Uh. I don't know if you know that. Hindu is a yoga thing. I mean, yoga is a Hindu thing. <laughs> That's the greatest accomplishment Hindus have achieved in this country. We've convinced young white women that yoga is a real thing. <laughs> it's not a real thing. Here, uh, put on these tight pants and bend over. It's good for you. Yeah. It's working, man. It's working. <laughs> Yoga was invented when some two when two Indian dudes were hanging out in a corner. They saw some dog bent over, and they're like, "You know who look really good doing that? Becky. Let's get Becky to do that." <laughs> she didn't like article. that joke. <laughs> She's like, "That's not funny." I don't agree. <laughs> we have it. I got a phone call the other day from a telemarketer in India. Uh oh deep Indian accent, like heavy. He's like, hello, can I speak to Nimesh Patel? This is Jeff. He's like, <laughs> like, no, it's not, brother. First of all, no dude named Jeff has ever pronounced Nimesh correctly. Second of all, you're calling Nimesh Patel. Talk to me, brother. What's going on, man? How's your life? It's weird, man. We're pretty much white, I think, in that we can be anything in this country. Doctors, scientists, mathematicians, engineers, until one of our kids builds a clock. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. If you don't know that story, so a brown kid that? in Texas built a clock, and they suspended him, because they said it looked like a bomb. I saw that clock. It did look like a bomb. <laughs> kid deserved to be suspended. <laughs> you can't build a clock and bring a screw, you brown idiot. Don't you know this is America? Don't you know what time it is? Keep your clock at home, man. Just build a volcano. But he met Obama and got a full scholarship to MIT, which makes me think it was a plan. Uh, uh, yeah. I think his dad was like, my son is a genius, but I can't afford to send him to college. We're gonna build a bomb clock. <laughs> We're gonna bring him to school and they're gonna ride that white gill to the White House. And that's exactly what happened. Okay. Okay, so you don't know this story at all? No. Okay, so yeah, this kid brought this, like, I think it was like a silver case. It was sizable. It started, like, ticking down, like, boop, boop. It was a bad timing kind of situation where it's like, that sounds like a bomb. 
when it looks like that kind of presentation, you know? And he brought it to school? He brought it to school because it was like his project of, it was, it was a it was a clock. I'm like, bitch, that ain't no fucking <laughs> clock. The thing is he got put in handcuffs by, and he's like 11. He's like really young. So I'm like, yeah. okay, that's a bit far. <laughs> like, yeah. you don't need to be putting this kid in handcuffs. I get the fear. Like, you don't know what's up. Like, that just looks suspect. Now I need to see it. That looks sus. I'm sorry. That just looks weird. I don't know what that is. It's inside of this briefcase. It looks like something out of a movie, you know? I mean, did it work like a clock? Like, did it, he really make a clock? Well, apparently... He just took parts of a clock and put it in here. This right here is actually part of it. was like it had a timer on everything on it. And it's like, it just looked weird. And it was ticking. Apparently it was beeping. If I was the teacher, I'm going to admit it. Like, I would have gotten scared. I would be like, I don't know what this is about. Is that a bomb? What's going on? Like, that's my first thought. That's why you and I are here. Because we are the descendants of cowards. We are the descendants of survivors who ran away from the saber-toothed tiger. And, and it turned out it was just a clock. And then uh, Obama tweeted at the kid going, hey, uh, Muhammad, I think his name is Muhammad. It's like, nice clock. Why don't you come meet me? That whole thing that, that Mesh Patel just said, I was like, damn. Well, that's nice. Like, this kid got a ride. That was, I mean, I guess it was worth it for the handcuffs to yeah. get all that. Right. You put me in handcuffs, bitch. I'll right. take I'll take some free education. That sounds like a good trade. Right. I got put in handcuffs before. All I got was three cup checks. That's what I got. <laughs> from the, the Why cup. were you in handcuffs? Oh, it's a whole thing. It's, oh. a, it's a whole, it, you'll have to come back Talk for that. Talk about it later. Yeah, I, it was a bad situation. <laughs> Like, why did I study for the SATs? I could have just strapped a calculator to my chest and be like, surprise! <laughs> Science, let's go to school. <laughs> We're pretty much right, except when it comes to dating. Mm -hmm. Like, Indian dudes aren't sexualized. No. No, Indian, no woman gets ready. He's like, I'm gonna snag me a Sanjay this evening. That, <laughs> uh, that don't happen. Over here, they're not sexualized. There's plenty of sexy Indian guys in India. And even here in the States, it's just not in, in our media. Asian guys are not portrayed as sexy, which is fucking bullshit. Anyway. I don't know, sometimes. You could wake me up from a drunken stupor. I can name you 10 white dudes that are sexualized and that are like sexy in movies and stuff. I could be very, very sober with a lot of coffee and I wouldn't be able to name you, but maybe one or two Asian dudes. If I'm lucky. I can name you like the face from the movie, but I couldn't tell you their name off the top of my head. Okay, yeah. same. Yeah. It's fine. It's okay. My girlfriend's white, obviously. And I feel like there's a vibe of Indian dudes that have been gentrified, and I think I embody that vibe. I'm, so my girl's white. I'd get the white struggle a little bit. You know, it's mostly hangovers and avoiding carbs from what I understand. <laughs> it don't seem that difficult. It's not for lack of interest in Indian women. It's just when I started out comedy as an open mic, I would try to date Indian women. Like, yeah, hey, I do comedy. And they would be like, oh, I'm a surgeon. This is not going to work out for you. <laughs> I was like, are you right? <laughs> It's like he's dating an Indian woman who's like really educated and he's just doing comedy. It's like, yeah. It's weird with Indian women around because they all think I'm a race traitor. Every Indian woman that sees me with my white girlfriend is like, I'm going to tell your mother. And every Indian guy is like, how'd you do it? I told her I was Puerto Rican. She don't know, man. I've been studying Spanish for three years. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm racist against my own people. I take a lot of Ubers, drunk. <laughs> the other night, I was hammered and I got into a black car because it was being driven by an Indian dude. I was like, hey man, this is where I need to go. And he was like, who the hell are you? I was like, this is not an Uber. He was like, nope. I was like, my bad, dude. <laughs> uh, Indian dude should not have black Toyota Camrys at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but then he drove me home. The shit was dope, brotherhood, man. What up? <laughs> I'm the number one Google result, if you Google Nimesh Patel. <laughs> and that's a huge accomplishment, because there's so many Nimeshes in this country. There's so many Nimeshes in America that one time I had an ex-girlfriend that broke up with me, and literally her next boyfriend was named Nimesh. That's more personal than it is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the number one Google result if you Google Nimesh Patel. And my mom Googled me the other day. She said, Nimesh, you're the number one Google result if you Google Nimesh Patel. I said, you goddamn right. 
And then she said, every other Nimesh Patel is a doctor. Where'd I go wrong? And she hung up the phone. <laughs> That's too My real. He's a cool dude. My dad, I found out recently, is the kind of guy that goes to the gym and follows around someone who's hired a personal trainer and just does those exercises. <laughs> <laughs> so why would I pay for this? This guy's doing his sales. <laughs> I would love to see Strange that. Guy. Right? I love that guy. He's so weird. <laughs> It's a weird time being an Indian person. I don't feel like anyone cares about Indian people. I don't think they do. I was at those Oscars last year when there was that controversy that there were no black nominees. I went to that show. There were no Indian nominees. We didn't even get a hashtag. You'll never see a movie called 12 Years a Med Student. That'll never be a film. 18 years a liquor store cashier. That's a real struggle. That's your first Nimesh Patel video, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, how'd you feel? That was good. Yeah. Does he travel? Like, where does he... Live? He's from New York. Either Jersey or New York. Uh, he's very much like East Coast. Even his cadence and everything like that is just very much New York. I wonder if he's done stand-up in India. I wonder how that would vibe. He also sounds <laughs> like he's had a little bit of whiskey yeah. in doing his comedy, which works great because it, it chills you out, you know? Like, I'm funnier when I have whiskey. Yeah. Or at least I And it's nice so. that he was so serious. Yes. You know, like yes. when you watch some comedy and they laugh at their own jokes. Yeah. A lot of the time. Yeah. You're just like. No, he's very deadpan. No, I, I enjoy it very, very much. And he speaks a lot of interesting truths while making you laugh at the same time. Yeah, that's so, good. So, very much appreciated. Y'all, thanks so much for hanging out. If you like Nimesh Patel, uh, make sure to subscribe to his YouTube channel. There's a link in the description below. You can find more of his comedy there. And follow Gina. Lucarelli. Lucarelli. <laughs> God damn it. I will get that at some point. But next time I see you, I'm like, oh, Lucarelli. Yes. Um, anyway, thanks so much for hanging out. I'm Jabby Kawai. This is Gina Lucarelli. Peace out.